Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a peanuts cake. Now I don't want to confuse you all. I know that this cake looks a lot like Snoopy, but it's actually Snoopy's brother Spike, who lives in the California desert. <laughs> I mean desert. It's the desert. This cake is too cute, and I am super excited to show you how I made it. But first, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do it right now. Right now. Literally right now, I will give you a second. Thanks for subscribing. We put out a new cake video every single Monday. So let's get started. I built a food safe armature with a cake board that is going to hold up Spike's head. The first thing to do is stack the cake. Here I have vegan confetti cake with vanilla buttercream between the layers. I have a drawing of Spike's head that is two size, and I'm gonna use that to check my proportions while I carve the cake. So with a serrated knife, I round out one end of the cake, which is going to be Spike's nose, and I'm cutting a little bit away at a time. If I accidentally cut too much of the cake off, it's kind of difficult to fix, so I try my hardest to get it right the first time. Spike wears a hat, so I added an extra half layer of cake on the right side. And then I carved it into the shape of the crown of a hat. I'll worry about the brim of the hat later. The cake is carved, so now it is time to cover the entire cake in a thin layer of buttercream. To do this, I used an offset spatula and a bendable smoother. This layer of buttercream gives me a nice smooth surface to place my layer of modeling chocolate onto. But before I do that, I fill the bottom of the cake board with white modeling chocolate. By rounding out the bottom of the cake board, it helps to shape Spike's head, and it also hides that cake board. Now it's time to cover the cake in a layer of white modeling chocolate. I work the chocolate around the cake, and I trim away any excess chocolate with scissors or a blade. Then I just blend the seams with a sculpting tool. I prefer using modeling chocolate over fondant because it's a lot easier to fix mistakes. You can go in and just patch up any creases or any holes. His head is covered, so now it is time to sculpt his body with some more modeling chocolate, starting with the neck and working my way down to his feet. I didn't include any cake in Spike's body because he is really skinny, so there aren't any areas that are bulky enough to really hold any cake. Think of this as an upside down cake with a topper. Typically, you see a cake with a topper placed on top, but in this case, it's flipped. So it's a cake with the cake topper located underneath. I wanna tell you guys a little bit about Spike's background. So Snoopy's older brother Spike was raised by coyotes, not a human like Snoopy. So when I read this, I'm over here thinking, oh yeah, that makes sense. Coyotes are so similar to dogs. I'm sure that they'll get along. Wrong. <laughs> Apparently the coyotes mistreated Spike and they wouldn't share food with him, which is the reason he's so skinny. The coyotes being mean to him is the reason that he eventually moved to a desert town called Needles, California, which is actually a real town, by the way. A small town. The population is under 5,000 people, so Spike is a pretty big deal there. There's even a statue of Spike at the subway. <laughs> and guess what? I used that very statue as a reference to design this cake. It's a great statue. Spike's looking good. Once I finished sculpting Spike's body, I moved on to sculpting his hat. 
I really didn't need to do much here. I just pinched the sides of the hat towards the front and I drew a line around his head. And that was that. For his ears, I flattened out some modeling chocolate like a pancake and then I pressed them against the cake and blended them in, making sure that the ear is super secure. Spike has a black collar, like his bro Snoop. So I added that and I added other black accents like his nose. So like I said earlier, Spike lives in Needles by himself, but he does have one friend. It is a cactus. <laughs> he has full on conversations with his cactus friend. So for this cake, I have the cactus standing next to him. It's in the shape of a number one, and that's because this is for a first birthday. This was a great idea by the customer. Spike is holding a wooden sign, so to add that, I flattened out some foil tape, then I covered it in modeling chocolate, and I sculpted it to look like a wood texture. I added some texture to the hat with a hard bristled brush, and it kind of makes it look like it's made of suede. Next step is to paint. I used black to paint his eyes, mouth, ears, and the spot on his back, starting with his eyes which are very, very different than Snoopy's. They're a bit droopy and relaxed. He's definitely a Californian. <laughs> he is chill. I literally looked up California slang terms out of curiosity while making this cake, and I kept seeing words like dank, butt hurt, <laughs> swoop, and bomb. Are these legit? Do people in California really use these words? I guess I don't go there enough. I'm not super familiar. Specifically, do people still use the term bomb? Wait, maybe bomb went away and then it came back recently. So saying bomb is back. That's bomb. This cake is bomb. I painted the wooden sign a golden brown and then I painted Happy First Birthday Colton in red. I went with a light brown for the sign because his hat is going to be a dark brown. I like a little variety in my browns. Next comes Spike's hat, which did not go as planned. <laughs> I still need to add the brim of the hat. And right here is when I realized that the easiest way to add the brim would be with a cake board, like I did in my Freddy Krueger bust cake. There's a link in the description so you can check that cake out. So I decided to cut the cake hat completely off and then place it on a cake board covered in modeling chocolate and then place the hat back onto Spike's head. Honestly, this wasn't that difficult of a fix, but if I were to do it again, I would sculpt the hat separately from the head. That way I can avoid giving him a lobotomy like I did here. I'm not the one who's supposed to cut the cake. That's the customer's job. Along with his hat, another defining characteristic of Spike is his whiskers. They are long and they hang down like a mustache. It's super adorable. I made these out of rolled up fondant that I let dry overnight. This is one of those rare occasions where I think that it's better to use fondant rather than modeling chocolate. That's because fondant will harden more firm and quickly and it's actually easier to work with at such a small, thin scale. You can see I poked a pilot hole into the cake with a sculpting tool, and then I gently placed each fondant whisker in. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to add these whiskers, so shout out to my husband Dave uh, for suggesting I use fondant. Sometimes I need advice from other people. And last but not least, I spread some buttercream onto the cake board, and then I spread crushed up cookies onto it so that it looks like desert sand. Looks like sand, tastes like delicious cookies. And there you have it, a spike cake from the comic Peanuts. 
This is a customer cake, so I can't cut it. But I think that you all got the idea when I chopped his hat off earlier. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, do it now because we put out a new cake video every Monday.